back to Motion RC. I'm James, and today we're going to be doing a quick setup on the A3L V2 Hobby Eagle Gyro. This is the uh, least expensive version of the Hobby Eagle series of gyros for fixed wing aircraft. They have this one, the A3L V2. The next step up is the A3 Pro, and then the A3 Super 3. All three videos we did setups for, they're all available right now, but today we're doing the A3L V2. So we're going to be using a Spectrum transmitter to set this up. It doesn't matter what transmitter you use. Um, you're just going to have to figure out which functions you're going to want to use in your transmitter. Uh, I'll show you how to get there in the Spectrum, but I'm not going to be able to help you with Futaba, FR Sky, things like that in this video. Um, we're also going to be using the Avanti as our demo model. Um, the Avanti doesn't need a gyro, but it has ailerons, it has elevator, and it has rudder, and those are the control surfaces that the gyro cares about the most, or the only ones they care about at all, so uh, it was a perfect platform to do this. So what we're going to do is a quick unboxing, get out of the bag, show you what comes with the gyro, and then we're going to start setting it up. So let's get going. All right, the A3L V2, when you take it out of the bag, you're going to see there are two bags inside. One bag includes the gyro itself, and you can see here all the ports on it. It has three out ports, it has your aileron, elevator, rudder port, then it has a mode, an S-Bus, and a gain, and we'll be talking about that more as we go through this video. And that bag also comes with a capacitor. That's gonna be used in an open channel in either your receiver or your gyro at the very end, it's the last thing you plug in, that's just there to protect you from voltage cutoff. Because obviously the gyro is gonna be working your servos a lot more than you would normally, so occasionally you could have voltage cutoff and we never want that, so this is gonna help protect you from that. Then the other baggie is gonna have some 3M tape, uh, two pieces, that's gonna help you lock down uh, your gyro, because obviously when you mount your gyro, you never wanna move it again and you want the strongest stuff possible and this 3M tape works great. And also this bag has four leads attached to it. That's going to help you connect the gyro to your receiver. So let's get started. So first things first, our Avanti is already bound up. We're using one of our Admiral RX 700 receivers. It has seven available channels. It's going to be perfect for what I need. I found a six channel uh, receiver might not be enough, but it depends on if your model is going to have gear, flaps, things like that. Uh, the purpose of the Avanti, it does. So you'll see here, um, we're already bound and everything is plugged in directly from the plane to the receiver. Now let's talk about getting it attached to the gyro. So first things first, you're going to want to unplug your aileron port, your elevator port, and your rudder port from your receiver. Those are the ones that are going to be uh, being functioned by the gyro. They're going to get controlled automatically by the gyro, if you will. So we want to take those out, and then we're going to plug those into the corresponding ports on the A3L itself. And those are going to be direct, so direct from the plane, you're going to plug in your rudder, your elevator, and your aileron into the out ports. Now it could get confusing because they, there is an aileron, elevator, and rudder ports on the bottom of the A3L, but we're worried about from directly from the plane to the out port. So rudder is going to be out three, elevator is going to be out two, and aileron is going to be out one. So now once you get those connected, you're going to use three of the four leads that come. And now we're going to attach those to where it says aileron, elevator, and rudder. And we're going to put those back into the proper corresponding ports on the receiver. So you can see here very simply, rudder to rudder, elevator to elevator, aileron to aileron. Lastly, they give you one more lead. Now you're gonna see on the gyro itself, there's two extra ports that should be open at this point. One is your S-Bus gain port. We're not gonna worry about that one yet. We're gonna worry about the mode port. Let's get that plugged in and plug that mode lead into any available open port you have on your receiver. That's the one you're gonna to wanna to, uh, program. For the sake of this video, ours is gonna be channel seven. It's in the AUX2 on the RX700. All right, so now that everything's plugged in, we're still not powering on the gyro yet. Now you wanna think about where you're gonna be installing your uh, your gyro. Obviously the leads that are included uh, are pretty short, so if you wanted to get the gyro back more towards the CG point, you're probably gonna to need to buy extra servo extensions. But looking at the Avanti here, based on where the battery is for my proper CG, the only real place for me to put it is gonna be up along the wall in an upright position. So now that's not a problem. The gyro itself can be mounted in any orientation as long as the ports are facing aft of the model. 
So you always want the A3L side, where the text is, to be towards the nose of the plane, regardless of the orientation. But uh, if you're in the upright position, I think that is gonna be best for our Avanti right here. So that's how we're gonna do it today. All right, so now we're ready to give your gyro power. Obviously, you wanna have your plane flat and level when you plug it in. So let's get her plugged in. And you'll see a couple blinking lights and eventually it'll snap into place. And right off the bat, you see we have a red light. Now, if you look in your instruction manual, red light means you are in 3D mode or AVCS mode, um, which is gonna be for guys flying 3D for, basically it's it's a heading function that's gonna hold your heading on the plane. It's, it's probably the least uh, useful function for guys flying EDFs and warbirds. It's mostly for 3D pilots. You can use it, but for the purpose of this video, we're trying to show you how to set it up quickly and efficiently for guys that just want your regular stabilization. So now we want to assign the channel that we've plugged our mode lead from the gyro into our receiver to a switch. So for our purposes, we plugged it into channel seven or the aux two port on the RX 700, and now I'm gonna assign it to a switch. So first things first, you wanna back out of the model. So you're gonna go to system setup. You're gonna confirm, that's gonna turn off your RF signal. Good, now we're gonna to go to the channel assign. Uh, function and the first one shows you where your ports are assigned to you want to quickly go over to the next page and that's going to be your channel input so this will tell you what channels everything on so like I have landing gear on a I'm concerned with the aux port right now it's already on a three position switch which is my top right this is my G switch so this is a three position switch so now if you plug in your gyro and assign your mode lead to a three position switch you'll have access to gyro on gyro off and 3d mode now that would be fine if you're comfortable with having all three options on any model uh, that's great but if you're flying a warbird or an edf you probably won't want the 3d mode and what if you're in flight and you accidentally switch to that mode that could cause a problem so what you really want to do is have this on a two position switch like the h switch back here so all you do is go to your the channel that you want to change and rack it over to H. Now we're gonna have it on a two position switch. But now what you're gonna see, since the way the A3L is set up, when you flip from a two position switch, you're only gonna have access to gyro on or 3D mode. Now that's not what you want. You wanna be able to go from gyro on to off when you flip that switch. So let's show you how to do that now. You're gonna fix that in the trim. So if you go into the trim setting, so servo setting in the menu on your spectrum, and you'll see travel settings. You wanna to go to the channel that your mode lead is plugged into. Again, for me, that was channel seven or aux two. So I go here. Now I have the switch in the position I wanna change. So I have it in the red, the light should be red, cause I'm in 3D mode. I wanna get out of 3D mode. Now you see, when I flip the switch back and forth, it goes from 100 to negative 100. When I'm in red mode, I'm in 100. I want to put that down to zero. If I rack the travel down to zero, now when I flip the switch back and forth, you can see I'm getting the blue light, which is gyro on, and I'm getting no light, which is gyro off. Perfect, that's exactly what I want. Because if I'm in the sky and I don't need the gyro, I can turn it off, and when I need the gyro, I can turn it on. This is what we want. Okay, now that we got our two position switch figured out, now the next step is figuring out the orientation. We have to tell the gyro that we are mounted in an upright position. Right now, the gyro automatically out of the box will be set up for a flat orientation. So that means you're putting it flat on the surface or even inverted flat, it doesn't matter, but we wanna tell it that it's upright. Because if you look, if you left it this way and you forgot, when I move the elevator up and down or when I move the plane up and down, I'm getting rudder movement. And when I move the, the plane side to side where I should be getting rudder movement, I'm getting elevator movement. So you obviously crash your aircraft if you left it in this position. So now we're going to get into the function menu for the first time. And that is gonna be a series of flashing lights that are gonna give us a bunch of different options. So the option we want most is mounting orientation, which just so happens to be the last option in the series. So what you're gonna do is press and hold the, the button on the gyro itself for about two seconds, and you'll see it start to flash, then let go. Now you're gonna see a series of lights. You'll see one flash, then two flashes, then three flashes. We're waiting for the one that has seven flashes. As soon as you see that, 
That's mounting orientation. Push the button real quick, then you'll see it light up blue. Blue represents the flat orientation. Quickly press the button, it will switch to red. The LED will turn red. Now you've told the gyro that you're in an upright position. Perfect. So now you can let go. Now the gyro will automatically stay in that function mode, so it'll just start recycling through the lights until you push and hold for another two seconds. That will get you out of the function menu and back to the point where you should see your light blue. So now that you've told it you're in the upright position, taking a look at the tail, when I move the plane side to side, the rudder moves, and when I move the plane up and down, you can see the elevator moves. Now, the next very important step with any gyro is making sure that your directions are correct. So how do we check our direction? So now before we go back into the functions menu, let's take a look at the gyro itself. Now I haven't fixed the gyro yet because I wanna make sure it's all programmed. So looking at the gyro, you'll see there's two pots on the front of it. One says gain one and one says gain two. Gain one is gonna be for the blue LED for your regular stabilization mode. Gain two is gonna be for the red LED for the 3D mode. So right off the bat, knowing full well I don't want the 3D mode, I'm gonna turn the 3D pot, gain two pot, all the way down and just turn it off. Just in case something were to happen, things happen in RC that are unexplainable, but if your gyro ever magically flip back into 3D mode, then as long as the gain is down, it will not affect you. It won't even matter. You wouldn't even know it. You'd just be flying a regular aircraft. So turn that one all the way down. Now focus on gain one. In order to check the directions, I like to turn my gains all the way up to the max so I could see the throw to make sure that the control surfaces are moving in the correct direction I need. So let's turn that pot all the way up. So now, again, gyro is on, we have our blue light, now let's check the directions. The way I look at it is the control surface should move into the movement uh, that you're making. So you can see here when I turn the plane, when I tilt the wing to the right and I lift the left wing, the left aileron should pop up. That's exactly what I want, so I do not need to reverse the aileron. Let's move to the tail. Now taking a look at the elevator, when I move the plane up, oh, you can see the elevator is correcting down. That's wrong. We want to make sure the elevator should also go up when I point the nose down, because we want it to correct. So we know we have to reverse the elevator channel. Let's check our rudder. When I move the plane into, into a movement, I should see the rudder move into me. And up, I can see the rudder is also reversed. So right now, I know we're gonna need to reverse the elevator and the rudder. How do we do that? Now we go back to the functions menu. You can see here on the screen, again, we have seven options. So you're gonna push and hold the button, get back into the flashing lights, and you can see right off the bat that elevator is going to be the three light flash. That's going to help you change the direction. And rudder is going to be the four light. So I wait for the three lights. Once I see three lights, I quickly press the button. And you'll see the blue light. That means it's normal. But to reverse it, quickly press the button again. Light's going to turn red. Wait a couple seconds. You'll see the red light blink. That means it's locked in. And then actually it jumps right to the next one. You'll see another four lights that means i'm in rudder mode let me push that button again i see it goes blue that's normal now i push it again quickly go to red now i've reversed my rudder and you see the red flashing light so now i've done the elevator and the rudder as quickly as that now let's push and hold the button again to get out of the functions menu and let's check to make sure we're right so now taking a look at the tail again when i point the nose down you can see the elevator pops up. That's what we want. It's trying to tilt my nose back up, which is beautiful. Now let's move the rudder. Beautiful. When I move one direction, it moves into the way I'm moving. So I'm moving the plane. I'm trying to make a right-handed rudder turn, and I see that the rudder is also popping out to the right, which is exactly what I want. So right now, all my control surface directions are exactly as I want them. Now, once your control surfaces are all correct, you know that all the channels have been reversed, everything is functioning properly, 
make sure you turn back down the gain on the pot on the gyro itself because we turn the gains all the way up so we can properly tell which way the control surfaces are moving you want to make sure you bring that back down when i'm about to fly an aircraft first time on a gyro i tend to put it at 25 percent so i rack the pot back to zero and then move it up a little bit to about 25 percent and then every time i take off and land i will correct depending on what happens with the aircraft but more on that later for right now, you are done. All of your surfaces should be functioning right, and you've got a pretty locked-in gyro. Now, if you had an extra lead and an extra channel on your uh, receiver, which I don't, you'd be able to put your gain on a master control, like a remote control gain. So you can control the gain from your transmitter itself, which is a great option. So if you're the type of person that in midair wants to make the corrections, uh, it, it works really well. What I'm going to do for the purpose of this video is I'm going to pull the mode lead out. Now, the second I pull the mode lead out, you're going to see the gyro is going to flip right to the blue light. If you never plug in a lead into the gyro, into the mode port of the gyro, your gyro will remain on all the time in the regular gyro mode. You won't be able to go to 3D mode or off. It'll just always remain on, which is fine if I'm going to use the remote control master gain. And sometimes some people just want it on all the time and never want to shut it off. And that's fine too. But for the purpose of this, I'm going to take that lead that was once in the mode. It's still connected to my receiver in channel seven, and I'm going to plug it into the gain. Now the gain, I don't want it on a three position switch. I'd rather have it on a slider or a knob. For the purpose of this video, I'm gonna use the right knob on the top, just cause it's very easy to see, sliding back and forth. So now going back into the DX9, into the menus, you're gonna back out and go to system settings. It's basically gonna unbind your model for a little bit. It's gonna unconnect from your model. You're gonna go into the channel assign. So go right to where we were. Again, I was channel seven. So you see, I had it on switch H. Now I'm gonna switch that over to the right knob. Now I'm gonna go back into the model. And now, remember, I changed my travel uh, in order for the three position switch. So I'm gonna put my travel back to neutral, back to where it is originally. In essence, reset it. So now it should go from 100 to negative 100. One thing about the remote gain, your max gain on the knob itself now will only be whatever the max gain is on the pot on the gyro. So in essence, you don't have to turn the pot all the way to 100%. Nobody's ever going to fly with 100% gain on your aircraft. That would just be almost crazy. You'd probably get wobbles. I wouldn't even attempt to fly like that. So what I would do if I was using a remote master gain, I would put it at the pot at maybe 50%. You can see here. So then I have the ability, if I start at 25%, if it's already too much gain, then I have the ability on the knob while I'm in flight to lower or raise my gain. So if I have the knob at neutral, I'm at 25%, which is where I had it when I had it on a switch. And I could shut it all the way down. If I turn the knob all the way to the left, I could basically turn my gyro off, which almost makes it like a switch. And you could also put it on the back slider of the transmitter. You could put it anywhere you want. Uh, the gain will in essence work, but for the gain you really want it to be on like a slider on a knob so that you could really fine tune it. So that does it for the gain and remember if you have open ports on your receiver you can have both a mode switch and the, the remote master gain going at the exact same time. That's completely up to you just for the purpose of this video. I only had a seven channel receiver so this is the most I can fit because I also have to account for flaps and uh, landing gear. So now, regardless if you go with mode or if you go with gain, if you go with neither or you go with both, you also want to find a spot for this voltage protector that comes with the gyro itself. You could plug this into any open port on either your receiver or the gyro itself. So since I'm going to be flying this with just the mode where I can flip the gyro on and off, the S bus gain port is open. So I plug that right in there because I have no open channels on my receiver. So that's gonna help me protect me from low voltage cutoff because obviously the gyro is working your servos a lot more than, than your servos would be working if you had no gyro at all. So you wanna make sure that it doesn't pull too much voltage, give you a dropout, and then your plane drops out of the sky and you're mad at everything. Use the voltage protector, be sure to use it before you go up and fly. 
All right, at this point in the video, most guys flying EF jets or warbirds, you should have enough info you need to get your A3L working perfectly. But there are some other functions in the functions menu that you can do that we wanna talk about briefly. So obviously we didn't get a chance to talk about the wing type. Your A3L gyro can also work with a Delta wing or a V-tail aircraft. The one thing you need to remember though, when you are setting up a Delta or V-tail, is that you do not need to pre-program Delta or V-tail in your transmitter first. The gyro is gonna take care of that for you. So if you have a Delta aircraft, let's say like the Freewing Mirage, which has no elevator, it's using Elevons, I would not go into my Spectrum and tell the Spectrum that it has Elevons. I'm gonna tell the gyro that, I, that it has Elevons and it's gonna take care of that for me. So just make sure to remember that. Then also there is an option for your receiver type. We're using a standard receiver. Most guys are gonna connect their gyro this way in a standard setting, but if you had an S-Bus or an S-Bus 2 receiver like a Futaba, then you just need to use one servo wire and you can tell the gyro in the functions menu that you're either S-Bus or S-Bus 2. You plug in that one lead to your Futaba receiver and you'll be able to program your gyro through your Futaba radio. I don't have one to show you, so anyone doing that, please, uh, you could direct people in the comments to uh, videos about that. But that is also a great function of the A3L for you Futaba guys. And lastly, let's say you get lost while you're setting up your gyro, you forget where you were, you came back to it later, you can reset the gyro very easily. Once you power on the gyro, just push and hold the button for four seconds. Don't release it until you see the LED flashing blue and red twice. And then once you let go, it should jump back to the initial way and that will reset the gyro and you could start from the very beginning. Or you'd like to do this if you ever wanna take this gyro out of an old model and put it in something new, you can reset the gyro. All right guys, so that'll about do it for the A3L from Hobby Eagle V2. Excellent gyro. I probably use this more than all the other ones just because it is so quick, so efficient. And for the most part, I really only need the ability to turn my gyro on and off and this functions perfectly. So I hope that helped. Any questions, please leave them in the comments of this video. You can also head over to the Hobby Squawk forums. Tons of guys talking about these there. RC groups everywhere will get you help. And also if you're interested in the A3 Pro or the A3 Super 3, those videos are live now and you can find those links in the description of this video. So that'll do it for the A3L guys. Catch you next time.